a massive Dracula fan. I've got the comic. I've got the history of Dracula on film. I've got the immortal Count Bela Lugosi's uh, biography. I am wearing a Dracula shirt. In case you didn't know for this episode, I love Dracula. I, I am a Drac fangirl, if you will. I'm also a Dario Argento fangirl. I love him. I love him a lot. It's my favorite Argento film. I also love his Jallos. And in case you haven't seen this channel, uh, I talk about him quite a lot. So you would think combining Dracula and Dario Argento would lead to the perfect film. And I will say it is a perfect film of sorts. Uh, this is my personal favorite bad Dracula. I love this bad Dracula, and I'm sure you're like, why? Why do you love this genuinely terrible film? It has a mixture of a bunch of Dracula variations, stuff from the novel, stuff from different film interpretations, like... It really encompasses the Drac lore while still being very much its own thing. And, uh, truly an out-there experience. Have I also mentioned it's in 3D? This movie's in 3D. We're going to not drink red wine, but uh, have some mango margarita. Oh God, it tastes terrible. But I don't have red wine in this house. So mango margarita it is. Without further ado, Dracula 3D. This really set the mood. Have fun! Nothing goes better with Dracula than mango margaritas. <laughs> oh. This was in cons? I'm sorry, there, there was just like a little thing that said like, out of competition in con, and I'm like, wow, really? I'm so sorry. <laughs> and also so pleased. <laughs> Because we're in for a treat, people. We're in for a real treat. It's Dracula 3D, baby. It's only going up from here. I keep forgetting that, like, this soundtrack feels like Argento just licensed some vague, spooky music. Like, some of his soundtracks are bangers, but this is just unlicensed, spooky music part of the public domain, could be anything. <laughs> we moved to this so quickly. Hardly any foreplay, just scare the shit out of her and then start making out. Ooh, romantic, you threw a little thing on the hay. Oh my God, they're gonna have a literal roll in the hay. Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm certainly hearing more spooky public domain music. <gasps> no, anything but but a terrible CGI owl. Oh, those wolves look so friendly. They look so happy to be there. I forgot to mention that this also has like the friendliest stuck wolves. Like you can tell they're having such a good time. That's half the fun of this. God, that's a big fucking bite. Sorry, that looks like he fucking punched her in the neck. Oh. Oh, I just bit his ear. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, sorry. It, it's the practicals. This is truly a movie that is from 2013, but also feels like Argento made this in the 80s. Oh man, it's even got that like red Technicolor blood. I love it for that quality, but people are also bothered by that. I understand. Like, truly, it is a movie that looks like it was made before modern, like, movie making technology, back when you had to use a lot of, like, cheesy practical effects and Dario Argento, like, had no budget, which, again, in 2013, like, feels like you could cut some of those corners and get a little bit better, but, like, there's a kind of charm to it. Sorry. I also love the fact that this is a version that does not necessarily stay 100% accurate to the original Dracula telling, hence the Kisslinger stuff in there. It feels like a mishmash of like several Draculas. I think that's also why I have an affinity for this movie. Cause it's like several Dracula mishmashes, plus a little bit of its own special weirdness. And it, 
it's like there would be a charm to like a cheesy set like this. Like, again, it looks very, like, retro, very vintage, very low budget, but it's just, like, in 2013 with Dario Argento, it just looks anachronistic and wrong. Like, it's not purposefully trying to be that, it's just he's never... He just didn't really change the filmmaking techniques. And I guess that's kind of, like, the charm of it, but I think it's the thing that bugs people about it. God, why does her wig keep getting worse?! It's a jump scare every time! And it's like, what is that? What is that? Why is that wig there? Why can I see the lace front? Uh, let me guess. The creatures of the night, what music they make? Also, if I, if I have messed up these quotes, I'm gonna be so mad. Listen to that. Children of the night. What music they make? Yes! Bingo! Oh, oh, we got a little bit of Bram Stoker's Dracula. We got a little bit, got a little sprinkling of Francis Ford Coppola Dracula. Ooh. Oh my God. Got a little traditional, got a little, little Ford Coppola. We got a little bit of Argento, we got a little bit of everything. What's not to love about this? No, I prefer to take my clothes off. She really did take her clothes off. Sorry, now that I got a close-up of her, I know it's I know it's so bad about the wig. Um, I know everyone's distracted with the boobs, but I care about the wig. Um Why is there like a braid right over here that doesn't make any sense? It does look like it, it just makes the wig look like it's- Oh my god! I forgot that he just comes in like that! Oh, I- I thought- I forgot this was silly. Sometimes this movie shocks me in the best way humanly possible. It's so fucking stupid. Climbing up the castle walls. Came a little bit late, but fair enough. Ooh, right for the race. Oh god, it's, oh, it's a terrible CGI wolf. Oh. oh, oh, it looks so bad. Oh, it's really scary. Oh no, it's a man. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible werewolf. Oh, oh no, that werewolf's so bad. I don't, I also don't know why Dracula does this with his Ha! Like, what, what is her accomplishing? Although, I'm not gonna lie. I would give anything to see Argento adapt Quincy Morris. I would pay money for that. Money. If Argento is taking suggestions, I'm just saying, just redo this Dracula thing and put Quincy in it. Come on, yeehaw, go America. I'm sorry, the violence with which she like Boom! Why is the camera always so focused on this woman's boobs? If I did something wrong, on your knees. Please forgive me. I mean, bro, to to be quite honest, I think you kind of ruined your own entrance. I mean, now everyone's gonna know. Oh my god, the friendly wolves! Oh! Let's see if they look happy to be there again. Well, of course isn't. But those wolves sure are happy to be here! Sorry. I love it when stunt animals look so excited to do their job. Like, a stunt cat never looks excited, but stunt dogs always look thrilled to be there. I'm having way too much fun with this. This is how you know I'm a Dracula fan, cause I'm like ripping from the Gary Oldman version, ripping from the Todd Browning version, ripping from the novel. Although as with every single version of Dracula that has ever existed, Mina will always have more chemistry with Lucy than she will ever have with Count Dracula. She came down with a bad case of getting bitten by a vampire. At least during every version. Is that 
for the versions where she takes over Mina. Dracula's confusing, man, okay? Like, those, those two characters should not be interchangeable, but for some reason, in every single version of Dracula, like, sometimes Mina's with the with Drac, sometimes Lucy's with Drac. Um, either way. You know, if only there were, like, three suitors here to also mourn Lucy's death. Not gonna lie, that still hurts my feelings. The fact that Argento did not include any of her suitors. No Arthur Holmwood, no Quincy Morris, no Dr. Seberg, none of them. Mean, mean on his part, how dare he. Straight to jail, Argento, and I like you. Thank you, Father, please. Man, that's an unfortunate angle. You really had to highlight that actor's bald spar up, didn't you, Argento? Like, no shame on being bald, not gonna lie. Like, as a person who does not have the most thick hair, I, I feel for people who are bald, but also, wow, that angle really did show off that bald spot. Poor guy. Ooh, that was an actor who's done that dirty. I would, I would never survive. Oh my god. The person you were talking shit about was eavesdropping. Oh, the CGI is so bad, but I like the fact that they used that he could actually turn into a bunch of different things to good use. I love it. Everyone just like, bleh, buckets of blood. Oh, damn! Oh my god, he took off a fan's head. That CGI bullet, though, that was actually pretty cool. Okay, because in the book, she doesn't know him, so I'm like, how did, did, did she call? Was, is there, like, a Victorian, like, yellow pages? Which she, wow, I really just said the yellow pages. I really, I really said how old I am. Um, is there some kind of, like, Victorian Google? Is she Googling him? Like, vampire hunters near me, best reviewed on Yelp. She was... Okay, now would have been the time to bust out the big cross that you brought from your house. Oh, her expression's silly. <laughs> okay, Mina just kicks him in the face. I'm, I'm sorry, Ajo Argento's expressions here are just... I, I, oh, damn, he just lit her on fire. Um... I... I'm... time I've seen vampires literally killed by just throwing some fire at them. I did- I was not aware that that was a way that they could die. That's awfully anticlimactic. Why didn't you bring your big cross, Van Helsing? You literally brought it from home. And- Oh my god. I forgot that she's fucking ridiculous. Oh, that's where the big cross comes in. You see? If you had that earlier, would have helped you with Lucy. But no, no, someone wants to be unprepared for every scenario. Okay, Van Helsing? Oh, we got one last cleavage shot and one close up of the terrible wig and the cross he should have brought to the whole Lucy debacle. For God's sakes, you were more prepared in this situation than in the previous one. I'm a little disappointed, Van Helsing. It is my favorite part. I'm so excited. I hope you know I chose this movie specifically for this part. I'm so excited. Yes, it's the Praying Mantis! It's the only Dracula version of the Praying Mantis. I'm so excited. It's my favorite part of this movie. Oh my god. Yay, Praying Mantis! Yay, Praying Mantis! I think... I think that he maybe thinks that's the reincarnated version of his dead wife. Wow, we are really taken from the Coppola version. At least we didn't slut chain Lucy, okay? That's the one part of the Coppola version I didn't like. Okay, I will not take any Lucy slander. Not today. That girl's great. Number one Lucy defender. Honey, I don't think God's watching you right now. You get down with your freaky self, Mina. It's the only Dracula I've seen where Dracula fingers Mina. So, there's that too. <laughs> Probably the horniest version of Dracula I've ever seen. Oh no! 
the only version of Dracula I've ever seen where he gets shot. He literally gets shot with a gun. It warms my American heart. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna say it warms my American heart. We really have to get rid of this idea that we all like gun violence, but I think it's really funny that this is the only version of Dracula where pew pew pew, Dracula just gets shot. It's not daylight, it's not a stake through the heart, it's a goddamn gun that kills Dracula. And I can't hate this movie for that. He's crossed oceans of time to get shot! This man has crossed oceans of time to get pew pew pewed! <laughs> oh, uh, straight to hell in jail. Don't do gun violence! Don't do gun violence! I feel like I need to say this to my majority American audience. Please don't shoot people! Gun violence is bad, but this is hilarious. Oh, and we ended on terrible CGI. Warms my heart. <laughs> Looks like the garlic didn't work, suckas. You got one last terrible CGI 3D thing. Have fun, you silly motherfuckers. If I lived in a just universe, this reaction would be in 3D. If I had a million subscribers, this reaction would somehow be in 3D. I would make it happen why you should get me to a million subscribers. Just kidding, I'll never get to a million subscribers. I talk about movies you don't give a shit about. But wow, wasn't that something? So what did I think? Obviously you know I love this movie, otherwise I would not present this to you. Um, I love the terrible CGI. I love the genuinely bad wigs. The genuinely bad wigs and the praying mantis that just randomly shows up. Um, I don't love the part in the middle that is an absolute slog to get through. I'm not gonna lie, the middle section of this is, whew, it's rough, buddy. You obviously know I love Argento. Like, it's, it's kind of obvious at this point. And I do not blame the actors in this movie. Like, sometimes, uh, a hurricane, a, a magic spell goes on in a set and you get a not good movie. And that's nobody's fault. But while this is not good, it is entertaining as all heck. So I'm gonna give this two out of five stars. Anyways, I'm Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter. And I talk about movies you don't give a singular shit about. So like, comment, and subscribe for even more movies you don't give a shit about. Find me on Instagram where I'm at official girl behind the counter and I talk about all the movies I like. And then find me on Letterboxd where I am Bardot for all you know, where I talk about the movies I like and also do not like, most importantly. If you wanna hear me talk some serious smack, join me on there. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, counter crew. See ya!